This big fellow is about as big as eastern black bears get. This cabin is right on the edge of tens of thousands of acres of uh, national forest and wilderness land that's uh, populated by black bears. So it's kind of interesting to look at uh, how bears react around the house and how they live back in the uh, deep forest. This bear has a pretty large territory. He stops by about every seven to ten days and checks out the bird feeders and just generally looks around and see if there's any scraps of food that he can pick up. Here he's uh, trying to get a soot feeder that's uh, a little over uh, seven feet off the ground and he stands uh, on his hind legs, he stands a little over six feet and he can reach about eight feet. Typical of the black bear, he'll come by and uh, check out the area and hang around for maybe uh, a few minutes. If he doesn't find any significant food, he'll just move on to his next spot on his, uh, on his route. This is one way to avoid problem bears, is not have a, a reliable food source that they can come back to time and time again. He knows he's not going to get much more than maybe a little snack, so he only stops by about every seven to ten days. Sometimes they just pass through on their way somewhere else and they don't even bother to check out the deck. Here we have um, two black bear cubs and their mother is nearby and they're checking things out. Here's a different mother and three cubs from a year or so earlier. She's very adept at opening uh, storage containers and uh, just watching the three cubs is just so fascinating. You see how they adapt to the human environment. But again, if they don't find much to eat, they don't hang around and uh, get into trouble. Never really had a problem bear in this area. They spend most of their time in covering their uh, territory out in the wild. But if they do find somebody that leaves out soot especially or leaves out a lot of food at night like dog food or something like that, then they will start to hang around and become a problem. But if they just uh, stop by on their uh, visit every, uh, every once in a while and move on, it's no big deal. This is a rare daytime black bear. This is a young black bear who's going to have some problems because I think he's just been kicked out by his mother and he's on his own and uh, he's looking for some easy food and this is really the first uh, bear that's hung around much in the daytime and uh, this can lead the bear to get into trouble but uh, if you don't feed them they'll eventually move on and find their more natural food of course bears can eat grass if they have to and it's nice to watch a bear just grazing in your yard without eating uh, human food. But now on to the reality of the bear's life. This is just a hundred yards from the house back into the forest and we see the first uh, significant uh, bear territory marker. And you can see they uh, tend to scratch, scratch up trees as far as they can reach to mark their territory. That's as high as I can reach, and I can reach about uh, eight feet over my head. So the bears, uh, especially like the big one we saw in the beginning, the bears like that can reach up about eight feet, maybe a little higher, possibly as high as nine feet up a tree. But that leaves a strong signal about that's a territory marker around the uh, housing. And then as you walk throughout the woods, you just see uh, bear markers uh, pretty consistently. 
These are the signposts of the bear's uh, territory. This is probably one of the most common signs you see of bear activity as you're hiking around the, uh, the high mountain forest. Of course, bears rip up rotting trees looking for food, especially grubs. Those are um, borer beetles. That's actually just just out of a whim. I opened it up. That's the first time I've actually seen the. Of course, you can typically tell the difference between a food tree and a territory tree because a food tree is usually rotten and uh, the bears tear into the core to find the grubs of uh, various beetles and other insects. And especially logs laying on the ground. They don't really have to depend on humans for food. There's plenty of food in the forest and as long as you don't leave food out around the house they won't become a problem. They'll spend the majority of their time out in their natural wild habitat scavenging for food. As I've hiked around the mountain trail, I just kind of made a habit of collecting images of bears uh, marking trees and feeding on trees. Some of the best high protein food is to be had just by simply turning over a large rock, which a powerful black bear can do with ease. Bear scat has a kind of a, a distinguishing look to it. It tends to be kind of flat, uh, flattened out, and uh, not as large as you might think it would be.
raccoon scat and uh, other wild animal scat tends to be formed more like you would expect a dog or a cat droppings to be. This is a little bit unusual bear dropping that's a little longer but you can see all the crushed up acorns in it. Bear scat is one of the most obvious uh, indications of a bear, re a bear recently passing. Interesting, once you're in the deep forest there's rarely a place where b uh, bears leave uh, good clear footprints but they uh, always leave uh, well-worn trails because they're creatures of habit and they'll take uh, the easiest uh, way to get from point A to point B in their territory. Old logging roads that exist in so many of the mountain areas make an ideal area for them to move around in their territory and hunt for food. What's interesting though is if you're walking or hiking into these, especially uh, not on the national park, but out in the, you know, the national forest or large tracts of private land that uh, people seldom trod on, but it's really rare to see a bear in the daytime. They can usually hear you, oh, probably five or ten minutes before they, uh, you get to their areas. So they have plenty of time to either get out of your way or, or, or hide or just, uh, it's also a time of, uh, least activity of the bears. We had a lot of wind here a year ago in the spring. We had a big tornado outbreak. There's just big tree blowdowns all over the mountains. What you end up with though is big trees blow down and they punch a hole in the forest. So you see this little burst of sunlight and the trail is overgrown with all these brambles and bushes and you can see the trail through there. Yeah, this part of the trail is bear paradise. A big forest blowdown, punches a hole. Everything on the left there is just continuous elderberries, and on the right is elderberries and blackberries. You can see a well-worn game trail, bear trail, right through there. The good news is there's plenty of food for them to eat, and most of their scat appears to be vegetarian.